Hi everybody! So, the job of a torque converter or a constant variable transmission, actually they're astoundingly similar to each other, is to maintain an engine at a constant rotation under a constant torque with a constant speed against variable resistances. Now that might not seem like a very important thing but actually it's hugely important when you think about how many engines we use and how we use them. Now there are a number of solutions to doing this but none of them are terribly satisfactory. You've got things like the current fluid based torque converters and they get really hot and need to be kept cool and aren't very efficient. And then of course we get automatic transmissions which again are not not terribly efficient or we get manual gears where we step through the gears or we get things like friction torque and friction plates and cones. None of them work particularly well but they all work better than having nothing which is why we use them. What's the point of them? Well if we can get a good torque converter it means that the engine can be much much smaller and amazingly smaller. We oversize engines at the moment to cope with the inefficiencies of the torque conversion or the power transmission. Now there is one kind of torque converter which hasn't received a lot of attention for oh I suppose the past hundred years or something and it is the torque converter invented by George Constantinesco. I hope I got that pronunciation right. What we're going to do is going to look at George's machine and build a working model so we can get an idea of how his torque converter worked because it is terribly efficient. Okay let's have a look at building the model and in order to build the model my first step was to draw this up in Tinkercad. First thing make the frame and to make the frame you need these two bits that's the bottom that's the top and then the two sides and then we need these four bracing bits here as well. These bits you'll notice there's a slightly thicker bit there and a thinner bit there. The thinner bit goes to the bottom and the bottom is without the projection that just clips in there and secure it with a little bit of super glue. Same on with the other side. Then we can glue the top on. I want to glue the top in place at 100 uh, millimeters glue in those side struts there to hold it together. And there it is together. Now to make the plumb bob we need to use these two bits and there are 12 here and 12 here so you need 24 one, uh, 10 millimeter ball bearings. Now I'm just using 10 millimeter ball bearings because they're what I've got and so I've done this so that it'll fit. But you can use anything, you just need a weight. You rest the ball bearing in the little recess there and give it a tap with a hammer to knock it in. Then when you've done that you take your pendulum arm and the bob goes on the bottom one there because the pendulum's going to hang that way and that's where the bob goes. That just presses through there and then that one goes on top. And we put a bit of glue on there to hold it. So when we've done the pendulum we need to put the arms on and for the arms you'll have find there are two of these with the thinner section and then one of these with the longer section and we've got three pins. <laughs> one long pin and two short pins <laughs> and then three pin caps so this one goes on there like that and we put the pin in there and then the pin cap on on the top bit of glue to keep it in place the thinner section goes on first, the thicker section goes on second, pointing out in that direction. The long pin goes through it. And then on with the pin cap. So one arm points out that way, the other arm points out that way, and the whole lot goes in the center there with the final pin to hold that in place there. And everything should be free to move so that we get that kind of movement and that kind of movement. 
So this upper arm is the actual input. Now we'd connect that to a motor through a crank and you put the crank on there and you'd attach an engine maybe or a remoter. Now because we're going to use this for demonstration we're going to put a hand crank on there. So the crank goes on that section there and as that turns then it's obviously pushing that inward and outward. That's going to be the output section. And to attach the crank we've got a gear cog and this straddle piece. The cog goes through there, that goes onto there. That then attaches to there. There we go, like that. And there's a small cap that goes on to stop it all slipping off. And then we glue all that on. Now, when you glue it on, you want to make sure that that arm is straight when the crank as it is at the nearest to that arm. Okay, when we've done that, we take these parts and put them together as a module. It's a pretty straightforward thing. There's the brace bar part, there's a support bar gear in between the two, and then a wheel and a handle so we can turn it. But remember, you could just replace this with a motor. I quite like hand turn stuff, so I've done a hand turner, and that takes place of my power input at constant rate, which is exactly what goes in here, whether it's a hand turn wheel or a motor. Of course, to join these two, what we need is a chain, and you print off 33 links of the chain, and they snap together. Then we feed the chain in here, and in here, and glue that on there with a little bit of positioning to make sure that the chain is tight. When we've done that, we can actually see the effect that it has. You can see that this arm here that I'm holding is the output point. If I turn that with no resistance to the output, then you'll see the output point moving as the pendulum actually swings around this pivot point here. Now if I add ultimate resistance, that is I hold that still, then what we'll see is that the pendulum pivots around this point here now and the engine still keeps its speed even though the resistance is stopping the engine moving the output point. And again if I take the output point pressure off then the engine transmits its power to the output point because there's no resistance. Now, of course, between those two points, no resistance and full resistance, this pendulum pivot point changing will act as a constant variable transmission. Now, there's something else to notice here, and it's where I think the genius of this idea is. When this is stalled and we're inputting power, of course, what we're doing is making that pendulum move. But that pendulum represents a store of energy. So as it moves up, more and more energy is stored and it's added to by the engine. So the engine is storing extra energy in here until there's enough for it to overcome the resistance on the output and it swings back down. So it inputs energy from the engine. If there's too much resistance to the engine, it stores the extra energy in the pendulum until the engine and the pendulum energy added together are enough to overcome the resistance. That's truly, to my mind, genius thinking. Of course, it slows it down because we have the time taken to store the energy in the pendulum, but that's always the way it is with gearing. You trade speed for torque, so we get more torque, but at a less speed. But it is, of course, doing it in a, a push-pull motion, and we want it to rotate. So if you like, you can see this a bit like an electrical transformer. It's storing that energy and turning it into push-pull, just like a transformer does, and we need to rectify it, and we need to rectify it mechanically, turn that push-pull back into rotation, and of course, there are loads of ways of doing that, and we've done about three different versions. We've used ratchets, we've used bevel gears, and more infamously, we've used this thing, which is our magic Seiko mechanism, because what that does is it turns push-pull back into rotation. So what we have to do now, if you like, is attach that to that and that to that, and we will have our completed machine. So I have made a couple of adaptions to this. One thing is I've put large plates on so that when the teeth engage, they stay engaged. The other thing is that's going to be the bit that pulls it backwards and forwards, and that's the bit that it slides on. So I've made a longer slide bit, and that bit is there so that it engages well with this arm here. 
The base plate has been changed a little bit because we need to be able to have that slide to have extended that and then we've got some little clips that go on the top there to hold everything in place. That whole thing fits on there like that, this arm goes on that peg, there's a clip to do that and then there's a little bracket there that glues onto the main cage to help keep everything stable. And that is the machine together. So if we turn this handle Then of course this goes round. Now this is a bit of a Heath Robinson Rube Goldberg I guess but I've done it this way so that we can see the major components involved in the torque converter. We've got our power input which is right here in my case a hand or it could be a motor. Then we've got the pendulum with these points of swing and that pendulum is connected to this ratchet that converts it back into rotary motion. The pendulum itself acts as a store of energy and changes the timing of the input to the output, slowing it down but giving it more torque. Now, of course, this isn't the uh, arrangement that we'd actually use it in. This is one where you can see what's happening, so all the components are spread out. But the actual um, device that was used, and it was used in a car, is a much more compact version of this where everything's laying on top of each other and I think makes it a bit more difficult to see. Now I have put all of these files in Thingiverse of course and the uh, link is in the description if you want to give it a go but I think personally it's a thing of beauty in itself um, and it certainly to my mind explains how the torque converter actually works. Anyway I hope you enjoyed the video thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.